these worms are doing something that we always thought was impossible. They are degrading the non-degradable. Digesting the non-digestible. They are eating plastic. This is how they reduced a piece of styrofoam in just a week. If we could harvest their superpower, we could get rid of our plastic trash in weeks rather than centuries. They could save countless animals, help clean the environment, and avoid toxic plastic incinerations. So, can plastic eating bugs help solve our plastic problem? Yeah, they are. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I have to say that mine are nicer. Huh? <laughs> She's Federica Bertocchini, a molecular biologist who in 2017 made an important discovery. I noticed basically cleaning one of my beehives that there was these this worms. So basically I clean, put in plastic bags, and usually what I used to find uh, was um, dead uh, invertebrates. But these worms managed to eat their way out of the plastic bag. So, so this, this is something interesting. To grasp the importance of this discovery, we first need to understand what plastic is. Plastic is a mysterious material. She's Susan Frankel, a science writer, author and real plastic guru. In the natural world, natural substances decompose. They're, you know, sort of broken up by bacteria, by bugs. They go back to their essential elements, carbon, water, oxygen. Plastic doesn't do that. It just gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, but it's still essentially plastic. That's why microplastics stay in the environment for centuries. Today, we see plastic's resistance to bacteria as a curse but we forget that it's also part of its miracle. Plastics really transformed the world. They really created our modern world, a world that is safer, more hygienic, more colorful than the world that came before. For most of our history, we've built things with stuff we found in nature, wood, rocks, and metals. But as the world modernized, there was a growing demand for properties that only scarce natural elements possessed. Things like resin, silk, or ivory. In the mid-19th century, people were worrying that so many elephants were being killed for their tusks to make billiard balls, that the elephants were being driven into extinction. Eventually, a billiard ball manufacturer promised a rich prize to whoever could find a more abundant substitute for ivory. That caught the eye of an inventor named John Wesley Hyatt, who spent several years tinkering in his workshed and eventually came up with this stuff celluloid. The plastic age had begun. Adverts like these celebrated the new material. It's the crystal clear plastic that lets you see everything you wrap. Now, get these lovely washable plastic roses free. The Dixie cups save her a lot of extra glasses to wash. Celluloid replaced tortoiseshell, coral, and mother pearl. Nylon replaced silk, and bakelite replaced the raisin of the lac beetle. It's funny because in the early years, plastic was seen as sort of a salvation of nature, and today we look at it as one of the chief enemies of the natural world. Plastic is now everywhere. Some are light and transparent, like plastic bags. Others are extremely resistant, like bulletproof vests. What they all have in common is they're polymers, which just basically means they're materials that are made of repeating atomic units. And I think of them as like beads on a chain. What a plastic looks like, how it feels, how it behaves, all of that depends on how the beads are put together. And the reason why plastic lasts so long in the environment is that nothing evolved to break down these type of bonds. Or at least that's what we thought.
So I bought these worms. <laughs> oh my goodness. They are called mealworms. And you can actually buy them online and watch them become a cute beetle as you feed them with styrofoam. It's not the organisms themselves that are breaking it down. It's the bacteria inside those organisms probably producing enzymes. This is Dom McGeehan. He is a professor of structural biology and he knows everything about enzymes. It's exciting times for enzymes. We're actually searching in nature, rubbish dump, all sorts of horrible places, actually to find those bacteria out there that are growing on the surface of the plastic and digesting it. Their goal is to find new bugs and bacteria that can digest plastic, isolate their enzymes, and then enhance and mass-produce them in bioreactors. Obviously, we can't just spray the ocean with enzymes, so this technology can't help with the plastic already in the environment. However, it could revolutionize our recycling system. To really recycle something, you have to break it down to its basic elements, so that you can rearrange them into something else. But because we can't break down plastic bonds, we can only recycle it once or twice before it becomes unusable. And that's why these worms can be a game changer. If you think about biorecycling, what you can do is take that plastic, break it down into its components again, and reuse it again and again and again, infinitely in fact. It sounds like sci-fi, but it's already underway. For example, a French company named Carbios is already using enzymes to recycle bottles like these. And not just once or twice, but in theory, Infinitely. If you can increase the value of the waste, uh, you incentivize the market to, to go forward and, and collect that plastic in the first place. Instead of people actually paying money to put it in landfill sites, people will be paying money to take it back out again and reuse it. So the technology works, but it's not scalable yet. And it's still more expensive than virgin plastics. Oil and gas is really cheap. So that means it's cheaper to make plastic from oil and gas rather than from uh, recycled materials. We need to get these technologies working at a much bigger scale than we're currently doing now in order to even make a dent. I do believe we can do that, but we really need to work hard. So can my worms with their enzymes solve our plastic problem? I think it's great if we can find things like, you know, mealworms that eat styrofoam or, you know, the bacteria that consumes oil. But the problem with plastic is really a design problem. It's that we're taking these fossil fuels and we're using them all too often to make things that are trivial and unnecessary and serve, you know, kind of stupid conveniences. We are in a toxic relationship with plastic. We invented it to substitute and repel bugs. And now we are turning to bugs to get rid of it. And I don't think we want to live without plastic. I mean, I, you know, I like the fact that my glasses sit light on my face or that in the middle of the coronavirus that there are disposable things. People want to demonize plastic. The issue isn't the material. The issue is how we make it, how we use it, and how we dispose of it. And here as well, my squirmy friends have an important lesson to teach us. They have adapted to live with plastic. We should do the same. friends here we are go now you're free go and save the world eat all the plastic bye bye thanks for watching and if you like my little friends or if you're just interested in sustainable topics check out our youtube channel and please subscribe we have a new video coming out every friday